In this video, I'll cover several topics. One, I'll talk about my channel, how it started, and what the vision is, and the future. Secondly, I'll talk about the gear that I use to go fishing and record videos, and also get into the software that I use to edit videos. And lastly, I'll talk about my experience with GoPro Hero 10 Black, and this is the latest and greatest as of today. Um, I happen to be an early adopter when it comes to technology um, with GoPro, so when the new one comes out, I usually sell the old stuff and uh, put that towards a new purchase. And luckily, value holds in a lot of cases, and you know I don't have to spend too much out of pocket. Um, but yes, there is an upgrade fee usually involved with that. Okay, one, my channel, how it started. It started as a way for me to log the fish that I catch and the locations I visit. It was never intended for me to grow the channel and make money, and I don't even have enough subscribers to make money. Um, so that will stay that way, and my vision is that one day, you know, my kids will see the videos and remember me, you know, places I go to, and you know, even myself when I grow older, and <laughs> uh, I don't have much, I guess, energy to go places like I do now. Um, you know, it's a way for me to kind of re relive uh, the. The fishing expeditions and you know all the fun I had. Um, so the future, I'm just gonna continue to do the same thing where um, I just record my my trips and kind of edit the videos so that I show the things that I'm catching and and all that. Uh, and that's also a reason why you don't see my face much because it's really not about me per se. It's really about uh, the hobby that I do. Um, so you will see my friends here and there, but you know I try to keep it minimal so that the focus is on the hobby and fishing and not really the people. Um, so this is uh, the second topic now, um, the gear that I use. So you'll see a bunch of batteries here. For fishing, you don't know when you're going to catch. Uh, some people might say they do, but you know, for most cases, it kind of happens, right? You fish, you throw lures hundred times and you know that one time that you hook a fish you want to make sure that you capture it there in camera so what I do is I continuously record so it's about a little over an hour usually for one continuous run so I do have a big SD card so big as in 512 gigabytes of memory so that will last me a whole day. Um, it'll last multiple days, but I usually dump the data into an external hard drive so that I can record new videos in case I don't get time to edit the videos. Uh, so this is an old battery. This is a new battery. I think that's going to be covered in the, the last topic. I'll talk a little more about the gear. Um, so GoPro 10, GoPro 9, they come with the stock lens here. And it's smaller than the Max. The Max gives you a little more versatility. So one, it is bigger, as you can see, it's definitely comes out further from the camera itself, but it gives you a little more angle uh, in terms of how much you can see in the video. And that's important because when you have your camera up on your head or on the chest, you will see a lot of hands and the reels and the focus should be on the water and you know what you're catching. Um, so I try to get the most out of it by getting a wider lens. Uh, it does add a little more weight to it though. I recently added this to the GoPro 10. I used to use this on GoPro 9 but you can use the same one and uh, put it on the GoPro Hero 10. And one other thing good about this is that there's a leveling um, option so that you can level it so that when you tilt your head, it's still steady. And also when you rotate, you know, like even extremes, GoPro has a, a way to keep things still somehow um, upright. So I used to record everything on a chesty. So it's a, it's a, a mount that you put on your chest, but then I changed to um, a head mount. I initially used the head mount, but didn't like it because of all the shakes. But starting with GoPro 7 or 8, they added something called HyperSmooth. And that is, uh, that was a game changer, basically. It smooths out the video without using a gimbal. So it was just something that I could tolerate um, putting on the head after that. So I have a head mount, and this is what I do. So 
Angle is important. What I advise is that you put on your head and you use your phone to make sure that you can cover um, you know, what you want to show. If you want to show your rod and reel, you may have to angle a little more, but this is basically, you know, maybe 35 degrees, 40 degrees angle is what you see my videos in. Um, this is the angle that I have on my head. And then, you know, from there it just records and I edit. Again, batteries are important. Um, so I always charge my batteries and take it to go. And usually between, I guess, stops, because party boats, that's what I go, go on. I can't afford to buy a boat that go offshore. So I go on party boats and usually they change locations every hour, a little bit after an hour or so. I go inside, drink some water, uh, change the battery out and come back out. Okay. So I'll get into video editing next. If you're a PC user and you're new to video editing, I recommend a program called Magix Vegas. I started with this software when it was under Sony. So Sony Vegas is what I started with. Now the Magix company bought this software and it's essentially the same software with a lot of updates. There are different versions and I'm used to using Vegas Pro but Vegas Edit, Vegas Post, Vegas Stream might be worth checking out. Okay, so here's the comparison between Vegas Edit, Vegas Pro, and Vegas Post. Again, I'm used to using Vegas Pro. And it looks like they're under uh, subscription now. Wow. Let's see. New purchase. Ooh, that's expensive. It's $400 now for this software. Second piece of the software that I recommend is DaVinci Resolve. It's on version 17 right now. So I moved from Vegas software to Resolve. And there was some learning curve with this software, but this is both on PC and Mac. So once you learn how to use the software, you can go between Mac and PC. So DaVinci Resolve 17 has a free version and the studio version. I paid for the studio version and I used it for a while. And like I said, it's, it's a great piece of software and there's a lot of support out there, a lot of how-to guides on YouTube. And although there's some learning curve, once you learn it, you won't forget. Currently, I use software called Final Cut Pro on my Mac Mini. And I transitioned about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I thought that the learning curve was not as bad as DaVinci. And it's easy to use and I can quickly go through my videos and find action scenes. Meaning I know when I'm catching fish, maybe 90% of the time. Sometimes I have a hard time if I quickly reel it in. But it's easy to just skim through and find the action and cut those scenes out so that I'm not showing a whole five hour video for a fishing trip. So Final Cut Pro costs $300. Uh, you pay it once and you get continuous updates to the software. So the last topic I'll cover in this video is my review of GoPro Hero 10 Black for fishing videos. And I recently upgraded from GoPro Hero 9 Black and you see two types of batteries here. This is the, the old GoPro Hero 9 and 10. And this is a new battery that came out that's supposed to uh, record for longer and can tolerate temperatures a little more. Okay. So GoPro 10 Black. My experience has not been that great. So with GoPro Hero 9 and the max lens, I was able to consistently record one hour videos, more than that usually, but at least one hour without overheating. So I never even considered these batteries. I used just these batteries and they would last me, you know, a couple trips. And considering that I record constantly, you know, that's actually not that bad, right? I'm always continuously recording. And when I edit, I skip through, just find the action and cut that out. Um, so I do go through a lot of footage for the stuff that I do, the way I record. So one thing I noticed with this is that this is currently on the beta firmware. So the last video I made was in the beta firmware and 
I had to do that to use it with the, uh, the max lens. Before that, I was using just a stock lens. You needed the better firmware to be able to use a max lens. And my experience has not been good. So my last trip, I used uh, the new batteries and uh, the max 10 or the max lens and was recording at 1080p. So it wasn't even high resolution. It was just 1080p with, I think, I believe it was 60p. So 60 frames per second. And first, I guess recording went about uh, 45, 50 minutes and it uh, overheated. And I changed the battery out. I went again and it lasted maybe 20, 25 minutes. And after that, it was just getting shorter and shorter. I changed the batteries. It seemed to last a little longer, but still it was way, way, way less than the one hour. So luckily I do have another camera. You know, one is a, a spare just in case things go wrong. And in this case, last trip, uh, it was required because while this was overheated and it was cooling down, I used the other GoPro to continue to record. Again, it's the same experience. The battery died within you know, an hour, maybe even less than that for the first one. And then after that, it just became shorter and shorter. So basically what I'm saying is that these new batteries didn't help much because of overheating problem to take the whole benefit of having a, a better, more, I guess, improved battery. You need the camera to hold up and not overheat, but uh, camera cannot keep up with the battery basically in this case. You know, and a lot of outdoor activities, you're going to be out in the sun. So they need to find a way, they as in GoPro need to find a way to reduce, I guess, heat or, or something so that I can continue to use it like GoPro Hero 9. I feel like that portion was downgraded. I mean, what's the point of having a better processor if you're going to be overheating and not being able to record? Even the quality, quality is not even that better. Like if I shake my head like this, you'll see a little bit of blur. I don't remember seeing that much. I don't know. There, I feel like there's plenty of light and the video should be clear, but it's not. So that's my experience. I don't have good things to say at this point. I'm hoping that with the new firmware, they address a lot of bugs. One of the bugs that I ran into on my two trips ago that's without this max lens was the fact that HyperSmooth semi crapped out and it was showing some weird artifacts in the video. And you can go to the old video and see what that's all about. I have, I guess, a time jump on that so you can click on that time and see what that video looks like. It's pretty bad. So I have a big trip coming up next year. Captain Yankee. Pulley Ridge, so it's a two, three day trip. So I'm hoping that by then they would have the firmware worked out and I would have enough time to test it out to make sure that this is something that I can trust, right? It's a once in a lifetime kind of trip. I don't have um, that kind of time or money to go on two, three, three day boat trips. So hopefully it'll work out. Okay, that's it.